Hey everybody, welcome back to Terrence Books Beyond, here today with a review of The Reader by Tracy Chi, book one in the Sea of Ink and Gold series, which is probably going to be my new favorite series. Now this is a book, but it's not just a book, because it's also a book about books, and it's also about a specific book, and the specific book in the book about books is also a book about books, because the specific book in the book about books about books is actually this book, which is the book about books, containing the specific book, which is the book about books about books. Also, there are pirates. Okay, let me backtrack. This book, The Reader, it's set in a fantasy land called Kalana, where it's pretty much like your usual fantasy fair, except no one ever invented written language, and so by extent no one ever invented books or alphabets or any of that stuff like that. Everything you know is passed down through oral history. Like, maybe there are some pictures and symbols around, but generally... Anything you know is passed through world of mouth through people telling stories to each other. And in this world, there is an orphan named Sephia. She gets a hold of the secret that her family has been protecting for as long as she remembers. And she runs away and she runs off with her aunt. And the two of them basically spend the next few years hiding across the Kalana, specifically the island that they're on, Delian. And the book starts with her aunt Nin getting captured by the mysterious forces that have been chasing them for all of these years. And all of a sudden, Sephia is alone and she doesn't know what to do. So she pulls out the object that she's been guarding and it's like this weird rectangular thing and it's filled with paper and they have a bunch of like symbols on them and yeah it's a book it's the book about books in the book you get me anyways she remembers some of these symbols from her parents showing her stuff and she slowly but surely starts to teach herself how to read and she becomes like the first reader in centuries or is she? Because while this is going on, there's also, we find out, this conspiracy about librarians and readers that goes back generations, that they've been safeguarding the book for a long time, analyzing it and finding all the secrets it contains, and trying to find ways to use the book to keep peace in all of Kalana. But of course, they're the kind of conspiratorial secret organization that wants to achieve peace basically through total totalian warfare. There's also a pirate, Captain Reed, who is trying to find this mythical, magical lost treasure that everyone has always been searching for and everyone has always failed to return from. But of course, Sephia doesn't know about any of this because all she wants to do is try and find her aunt. So she teaches herself to read and she's looking through the book trying to find secrets that might help her come across and find the trail of her aunt. Eventually it leads her to a group of what's called impressors who have been kidnapping young boys across the land and training them to become bloodthirsty killers who only like to fight. And they've been doing this in the name of a pirate lord named Sarah Keen who's like declared himself the Lord of the Sea to everyone else's chagrin. Sefia manages to free the boy that the impressors have, and he's already been, like, brainwashed and trained, but she manages to, like, bring him back, and she names him Archer, and the two of them team up, and they go on this epic adventure trying to figure out what secrets the book has and where they might possibly be able to find Sefia's aunt. So yeah, that's a lot of plot, but this book handles it perfectly. I am always a sucker for a really good narrative structure, and this had a really damn good narrative structure. It always felt natural, it always felt like it was building towards something. I feel like the ending kind of just stopped, but at the same time I feel like if they went too far they would have just drawn things out, and if they stopped too early then it would have been a satisfying ending to the story. That's something that maybe I would have been a bit bitter about if I hadn't already known that there are more books coming out in the series, and there are more books coming out in the series! This came out in September of 2016. The next book comes out in September of this year, and I am so hyped for that. That's just one of the many, many things I loved about this book. Another thing that's awesome is that literally every single character is a person of color. They're in a fantasy world, so we don't actually know what the counterparts would be, but you can tell just from the descriptions that there are people who are meant to be East Asian, they're meant to be Desi, they're meant to be Latino, they're meant to be African, they're meant to be Afro-Caribbean. Like everyone, even passing characters that really aren't important to the plot, everyone gets their skin color described. Like, oh, this person's honey, this person's copper, this person's tan, this person's person's bronze, they're black, they're brown. It's just there's no way you cannot get around the fact that everyone in this book is a person of color. It is delightful. And the author, Tracy Chi, she's East Asian, and Steffi herself is also meant to be East Asian. And like, you can even see her on the cover, which I didn't realize this until recently, but you do not often see people who aren't white on the covers of books, so the fact that we've got an East Asian woman just right there on the cover, like you can't deny it, that the main character is meant to be East Asian, that's pretty cool. Also, I really dug the world building. Like, even if this didn't have the thing about written language never being created, it'd still be a really in-depth world because we get so many details on the islands and their kingdoms and the pirate culture and all of the myths and legends and tales that have been passed down through generations through all of these various different filters and all of these different peoples and populaces. It's very well thought out and I'm sure we're going to get even more of that in the future books. But the thing that 
really stood out for me because Tracy Chi, she put a lot of thought into this clearly. If you're in a world that doesn't have written language and the only way to pass things on is oral history, you're not going to get remembered if no one really cares about your story. Like, one of the major things about a lot of the pirates is that they don't do it just to be like, ah, oh, rebels and bad guys, yar, har, ho, ho. They're doing it because they want to be involved in these amazing tales of, like, treasure stealing or going on these magical adventures or meeting these crazy people or fighting these crazy monsters. Because if you can put yourself into a good story, then people will always remember your name. And likewise, if you start to get overshadowed by someone, like, there's an instance where Captain Reed encounters a woman who's like, she's been driven to the brink of death and she's trying to keep him from going off the edge of the world because there's a little subplot flashback thing where Reed and his crew are trying to find the edge of the world and they meet this woman who tried and failed and she's like you know captain people might remember you if you find the edge but are people going to remember your crew and that really shakes him up because kind of likes his crew like they're his best friends and he realizes oh my gosh if I'm the only person getting remembered for these legends I'm kind of doing my crew a disservice because they will never truly be remembered and so then eventually when they do cross paths with Sephia and they find out that the book, among other things, contains some details of their previous adventures, they're like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. This is like a permanent record of our existence. That's a really nice scene, but just in general, the fact that Tracy Chi realized there's going to be this kind of glory-seeking, I just want to be special culture going on with everyone, because no one wants to be forgotten by all of history. They want to leave their mark, and if they can't do that, they start to wonder if they serve any purpose at all. Also, also, there's a secret code! I mean, okay, it's not a, really a code, but there's a secret message. Like, if you're reading the book you need to pay attention to like the stuff that goes on the margins and stuff that happens at the bottom of the page because there's all these little like easter eggs and hints and secrets that go on throughout the book they're just really nice details i mean they don't ultimately affect much except maybe foreshadow some of the twists that happens at the end but mainly they're just there to like even more so bring the book to life and bring the story to life and help engross you in it i am legitimately so pumped to read the next part of this story it's like how do you, how do you people on booktube get arcs? Like, who do you message? Who do you wave at? Like, can I just, like, go to my window and just yell into the abyss? Tracy! Send me an advanced copy of the speaker! I want to find out what happens next! So yeah, the book's pretty good. <laughs> Anyone who likes any kind of fantasy, really, is gonna adore this book. It is phenomenal. I feel like I say that about a lot of books, but this book is truly phenomenal. Like, I really hope this gets big. I want to be, like, the next big thing, the next Harry Potter or the next Hunger Games, because I guarantee you, if this can get the right people behind it, it'll take the world by storm. For reals. So that's my review of The Reader. Hopefully I've convinced you guys to pick it up and, well, read it. <laughs> If you like this video and you want to see more, feel free to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. You can also check me out on Instagram and Goodreads in the links below. And until next time, I'll see you all later.